Welcome back inside Studio 1A, everyone. I'm Katie Couric along with Matt Lauer and Al Roker. We're going to learn more about what exactly happened just seven seconds before the scheduled launch. All of this on a very important day in American space history. Thirty years ago today, man first set foot on the moon. That man, of course, was Neil Armstrong. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. Those immortal words, of course, coming 30 years ago today. Meanwhile, Matt and Al, do you remember where you were when you were watching this historic event unfold? I was home in the living room with my family. Yeah? Vividly. I was at Camp Kennybrook in Monticello, <laughs> New York, <laughs> gathered with all the other campers in the cafeteria. I remember it like it was yesterday. I know. Isn't that wild? Yeah. I was in Julie Newman's basement. I remember what a hot day it was, but how cold it was in Julie's basement and how exciting it was to yeah. see all that transpire. Yeah, it was incredible. Anyway, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, of course, spent two hours and 15 minutes on the moon that day. We're going to look back on that mission, Apollo 11, as well. Matt? A man on the moon by the end of the 1960s. That was a goal set by President Kennedy. He never saw it happen. His life, of course, cut short by an assassin's bullet. This is happening on the anniversary of another milestone in space. 30 years ago today, Neil Armstrong became the first human to walk on the moon. It's easy to forget just how amazing that was. And as we've just discovered, not everyone was so sure it would work. Here's NBC's Bob Kerr. The world caught up in the excitement and fascination of the moment. A four-legged spaceship about to touch down on the moon. Okay, engine stop. For most of us, apprehension took a back seat to the prospect of the first men on the moon. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. But for astronaut Michael Collins, who orbited the moon while his two colleagues landed in a spacecraft known as the LEM, there was a nagging fear. My concerns uh, were not within the command module, but simply that something might go wrong with the uh, LEM, with the lunar module, and these two guys might get stuck on the surface of the moon. And it now turns out that two days before this historic moonwalk, as Apollo 11 rocketed its way through space, there also was concern at the White House, where a young speechwriter got a scary phone call. I got a call from Frank Borman, who was an astronaut uh, at NASA, uh, with a kind of disturbing note. And he said, um, is there an alternative uh, posture uh, ready for the president uh, in the event of a mishap? Mishap? The plan was for President Nixon to congratulate the moonwalkers, as he did. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. But what would have happened if the worst fears of some astronauts were realized? If this lunar module failed, trapping Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon, facing certain death. What would President Nixon have said and done then? Now we know. Two years ago, columnist Jim Mann found an old memo in the Nixon files at the National Archives. At some point, uh, they were going to cut off communications, and these guys were going to have to die on their own or possibly commit suicide. But the moon disaster speech never had to be delivered. President Nixon never had to call the widows-to-be. Still, the words William Sapphire wrote for Nixon 30 years ago were poignant. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied. But these men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. Others did follow, but on this anniversary, there's no denying the place in our hearts for Armstrong and Aldrin, who made it home safely after all. For today, Bob Kerr, NBC News, Washington. It is 7.41, and coming up later, the Americans who are still holding reservations to the moon. But up next, very much as we've noted this morning, man first walked on the moon 30 years ago today. Many of us who are old enough will never forget where we were the day man landed on the moon. But for some folks, watching wasn't enough. They wanted to be there and take their own giant leap for mankind.
Okay, engine stop. AJ had a descent. July 20th, 1969, the whole world held its breath. Tranquility Base here. The Inkle has landed. But some people didn't just watch Neil Armstrong on TV. They wanted to follow in his footsteps. And I already had a ticket. I already had a ticket on the first commercial flight. So my excitement, you know, was doubled by that prospect. That's right. Some people really had seats. All the big airlines wanted to capitalize on moon mania. But Pan Am, the airline that pioneered international air travel, took it one step further. Sometime in the 21st century, your children's children may very well fly Pan Am to the moon. Pan Am didn't wait for the 21st century to start taking reservations. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. A year before Armstrong stepped onto the moon, Pan Am kicked off an ad campaign. Folks could write an application letter and receive a free numbered reservation card that guaranteed them a seat when the moon route was launched. The mail just was bundles and bundles every day that I did nothing but answer mail around the clock and made sure that these letters were honored and that they received their weightless card. By 1971, when Pan Am stopped taking reservations, 93,000 visionaries had signed up. It's a bit ironic. Pan Am, the airline that wanted to fly you to the moon, now can't even fly you to Cleveland. The original company went bankrupt in 1991. I never thought I would see this letter again. And a lot of folks were true believers, and when we showed a few of them the letters they wrote 30 years ago, they were still dreaming. When I got my card, I, I, I was not really happy with the number because it was pretty high. Uh, and I tried to calculate, let's see, at a normal airline size, how many trips would there be. Uh, frankly, there might not be any pebbles to pick up off the moon by the time I got there. In 1969, I was an agent at the William Morris Agency. I had no fear. You know, I was a young killer agent at the William Morris Agency. They taught us not to be afraid, just to plunge in. In my letter, I even wrote to them that I wanted to go first class. And if all the first class tickets were taken, I'd go on standby. But uh, please consider me for first class. I told everyone I have uh, a ticket for the moon. And it, I, should, I should make it. I, sh I should be on it. I expected to do it. I expected to be on it. What happened? When it came, uh, I certainly showed it to my uh, friends, uh, and, and uh, I think their reaction was, that's the stupidest thing we've ever seen. To be uh, rather careful uh, to keep track of where your center of mass is. You know, when Neil Armstrong was bounding on the moon, he was doing those kangaroo jumps. I mean, that's what I pictured myself doing. I said, I could do that. I could jump that high, He'd probably jump 30 feet. I mean, that, that was so exciting. First thing I think I'd do, well, I'd probably have to take a little stroll first. Then I, I think I would probably stand there looking out into space, seeing things no one else has seen. Just the idea of, of, of seeing Earth, you know, from that distance and, and uh, you know, the colors. Talking about incredible views. Uh, can you imagine that scene? I mean, it was just, it was tremendously exciting just to, just to be up there. And I, I would go immediately. Uh, and I am still planning on going. I am quite convinced that there will be trips to the moon. If Pan American would call me tomorrow, I'd have my little suitcase packed and I'd be off and running and saying, bye world, I'm going to the moon. I don't know when I'm coming back down. And a couple of quick notes. Frequent flyers flying to the moon and back would earn 477,714 miles, enough for 19 free domestic tickets. That's reason enough. And Pan Am, as we mentioned, went bankrupt in 1991. A new company has bought the name and is struggling to start a new passenger service. So, you guys going to sign up? Yeah, but with my if luck, ever can. with my luck, I'd get bumped. <laughs> <laughs> You'd get bumped there on the return yeah, flight. Yeah. I'm stuck on the moon, and all I got are peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go in a second. You would? Absolutely. I think it'd be amazing, and I love their spirit of adventure. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? After all these years, mm. still wanting to go. How about you? I'm kind of risk averse. I'll let you guys go and tell me all <laughs> okay. about it. We'll do a live shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's 8:39. We'll be back in a moment. This is today on NBC. Stop, stop.